Predictably, our adventure starts with a mistake. Nope, 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 nope. Oh, you pain in the ass. And this being nightmare zone danger is never too far away. Oh, that's a double jug. I'm sure that won't come back to bite me on the ass later. <laughs> but juggernauts aren't the only thing out to get me. Suicidal ferals, what are you going to do with them, man? And single ferals are the least of my concern. Oh, look, it's a pack of the fuckers. But I'm well equipped for every situation. So allow me to explain my plan. I've come all this way to visit these dodgy soldiers for two reasons. I need a ton of influence so I can claim a new home site. The farmland compound. Universally accepted as one of the best bases in the game, if not the very best. Its central location is ideal for launching special operations, wireless default facilities, and numerous open slots make this base extremely customizable. There's just one little problem. It costs three and a half thousand influence. So I sell my valuable shite to the soldiers, then recruit one of their members for cannon fodder. This is because I need to take out two player carts in order to make the farmland compound claimable. I suppose the first thing we do is taking out this infestation right next door to you. Basically, I'm trying to help them out, like, you know? Together, we double team the first plague zombie we see, but I'm questioning my choice of teammate. Yes, that, that, yeah, because you whipped out your pistol and started firing at them, you silly bitch. I lob a molly and headshot the three screamers, and together we fight taking out the rest of the infestation. And this time I even managed to take out the final zombie. I set a waypoint to my first player card. That might be one of the ones I need to take out just to claim the base that I want, you know? And if it's not, at least I'll get a crap ton of influence. Especially as before I left the base, I activated satellite broadcast to get an extra 20% influence for the next 45 minutes. But on my way, I get distracted by more suicidal ferals. In fact, I get distracted by many wandering hordes. I don't know why I feel the need to have to like mow down every single horde that I drive past. I think that's, again, that's like the hoarder in me, you know? I get to the farmhouse where the play cart is formed, and there's only two wandering hordes on my tail. I park with my driver's door blocked so I can't get ripped out by the zombies. Oh, I mean, scouts still need your help. Hey, listen, I turned down the pedophiles in the last fucking it video, alright? I ain't sticking with them now. I risk hepatitis and charge through the window. I then pop a red bull to unleash the beast and get ready to party like I'm a rock star. And me and my heavy shovel really love to go to town on this bitch. I dodge the incoming zombies before deciding my best bet was to burn the whole thing to ground. Time to go. Oh shit, feral time. But it just goes straight for the cannon. I mean, the teammate. It goes for my teammate. I go for another round of incineration and definitely don't cinch my eyebrows in the process. Nope, I am not on fire. It wasn't me. I retreat to allow the zombies to spread. Then, like an inconvenienced American, I whip out the shotgun. Shit, I'm on the radar. Ah, well, at least my cardio's going up. Most important rule of zombie land. My BFF, whose name currently escapes me, gets surrounded by the undead and I fear the worst. No, you can be fine. Look, I've sorted you out. Proper. Luckily, two final hits with the heavy shovel takes out the heart. Sweet. Oh, but the feral's still here. But this game doesn't excel at close quarters combat. So, take out this fellow, please. Oh, thank you very much. I make sure to loot the player cart, but sell all the random shite I can't carry to the cannon fodder. Oh, well, there's a, that's a horde and half now. I then get distracted by another wandering horde. I use a molly to thin out the regular zombies, but my mate just charges in there with no thought of her own survival. After the fire dissipates, I move in for an easy kill. She's such a great teammate. There's all the distracting for me. But as I take out the last armoured zombie, she takes massive damage. Oh, really? You're gonna get murked by a bloody regular zombie? That's embarrassing as fuck, that is, though. After that, I make my way over to my future home site with the hope that I can locate a couple of player carts on the route. But while searching, I, like, seriously fuck up. Oh, no! No, no, no! Oh, God, that's not good. That is... Really not good. But luckily the jugs charged hit me just enough to unstuck me. But thanks to the juggernauts for, you know, giving me a gentle knock. <laughs> that could have been really bad news. After all that agony, I'm still yet to find the player cart that's claiming my home site. Your heart here, maybe? Yeah. Fantastic. I once again park tactically, but disaster strikes when I try to down a Red Bull. Oh shit. <laughs> Wrong button. I meant to use the stim. Got a question decision to have the same button, give you life saving stamina, while also potentially burning yourself alive. Thanks to my mate distracting the whole outside, I use my heavy shovel to face the player But its natural defense fills my lungs with a nasty gooey substance. My next step is to naturally retreat, and I do so dodging carefully past a feral. I then kill him with a bunch of 22. You might not have been able to see it because my head was stuck in a bush, but the game doesn't just give you 12 influence for nothing. Meanwhile, my mate's just getting pounded harder than an adult website. Oh no, Glove, I got you! What can I say? She's obviously one lucky girl to have a guy like me looking out for her. And with that whore dealt with, I'm able to charge back in with my heavy shovel and go to town. Oh, Another feral. Jesus Christ, these things just come out of nowhere. Like a lad with premature ejaculation. Yep, that's not good. Pop a pill. But my escape is even less good. Have I got any- Oh, shit. While on the floor, I get pounded by the feral and the horde. Oh, my God. Then my mate just flat out abandons me. What a-
bitch. Just start following me. Issues have been made. That guy's got no arms. He's still trying to eat me. God, how desperate are you, you pricks? Another two swings of my heavy shovel takes out the player car. Jesus Christ. Well, I mean, that could have definitely gone smoother, really, couldn't it? Let's be honest. I loot everything necessary from the player car. Then while leaving, I notice my former friend has left a rucksack just lying on the floor. She didn't have much on her at the time that she abandoned me, but I'll sure I'll put that frag to great use. Seeing as we've had our ass kicked quite severely so far, I decide it would be a great idea to heal back at base. But on the way back, I run into another feral pack, and it seems they're learning. Oh, no, 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 no! The ferals are no longer suicidal! No, I take that back. They kind of are. With chaos mildly avoided, I make it back to base. I then take over as Loren as Jamie checks into the infirmary. And after getting my spanner out, it's not long before I'm back on the road. And as I'm leaving, I decide to lure the double jug horde away from base. You're trying to get him away from home, you know? I'm a, I'm a good guy after all. Well, I try to be. The next player card is set up similarly to the previous one. And I get the first phase out the way with my double bladed axe. I then finish it off rather easily from the roof of my car. Shut up. Stop looking at my health. This definitely not a story to be told by there. I'm now able to claim that. However, I don't have enough influence. But I do have a plan, and that plan is a fucking good one. Even if I do say so myself. For what feels like the 16th time today, I head back to base. This playthrough really isn't doing a lot for the environment. I really hope nobody tags Greta. I really don't fancy being cancelled. But on my way back to base, I accidentally create something that's utterly terrifying. Well, that's hell of a horde, that is. I park up and wait for the feral to top himself on the boot of my car. And while distracted with one horde, I have another approaching from the other side. Oh, no! No! I desperately tried to reverse out there, but they got me pinned in a narrow valley. Oh, no! <laughs> Using my advanced driving maneuvers, I take out a screamer with my arm. That is, like, a mega horde now. Jesus Christ. At least they're far enough away. But are they far enough away from base? I'm majorly conflicted, and at this point, I'm less than 200 meters away from So home. I decide to get out and go with the old blow and run tactic that would make you incredibly popular on Grinder. Get in, quickly! No, you got in the back, you silly prick! Oh, my God! There's zombies coming after you! Moron. Moving on, back to the planet hand. Can anyone remember this fine piece of cinema? If not, you can check out the link in the description. And in order to pull off that utterly chaotic plan, I had to use the duplication glitch to get that many grenade launchers. And, well, they're just sort of sitting around gathering dust. Back to the soldier dudes, right? I'm sure they'll be completely fine with the fact that I'm not with the mate. Oh, for Christ's sake. I am completely turtled now. That's well, a good thing the jug notes aren't here anymore. Using the radio, I managed to unstuck myself. But that uses a surprising amount of fuel. Now I've got nearly no fuel. So that was a waste of time. So after another quick pit stop, I head out to sell my shit to the soldiers and even take out another pack of ferals on loot. Man, I should call this video Suicidal Ferals. Them motherfuckers just don't quit. Hi, guys. Hope you're good. And um, so... About your friend. Yes, she decided to leave. But nothing to do with you. Oh, really? They can't afford it? Tight ass bitches. What kind of soldiers don't budget for grenade launcher usage? Honestly, these law don't deserve that girl who ran away from them. So instead, I decide to head to a wandering trader who's bound to have more influence than a titty streamer. And thanks to my reputation of being the greatest speedrunner in this game, despite the fact I've never done a speedrun ever, I get to the wandering trader quicker than you can say like and subscribe. Can we ignore the fact there's a horde next door? It's better to be safe than sorry. And if it all goes wrong, at least I got some backup in the form of the trader. Plus, it's been a while since you've seen me display my expert stealth abilities. But this is what separates me from everyone else that plays this game. I have a superpower that makes infestations just get even bigger. Well, at least she's actually competent. She may be competent, but I still have to do the majority of the heavy lifting. And then it's time to trade. How do you not have enough to trade? Why won't anyone buy my grenade launchers off me? After this devastation, I decide to pick up a mission. Maybe they'll have enough influence for a grenade launcher. Go meet Maxi, what you want to see if he'll be able to trade me. And if not, at least the mission will give me vital influence. I meet up with Max, but this bloke just doesn't stop talking. Yeah, 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 yeah. Whatever, whatever. Shut up. Shut, shut up. And listen, do you want to buy a grenade launcher? But he too is poorer than Tory Britain. But Max seems like a cool guy, so I decide to stick with him for five. Although I think it's fair to say Max immediately regrets becoming my friend. The juggernaut has forced the car to become stuck on the shipping container. Okay, you know what? We're abandoning the vehicle. Rather predictably, the car bursts into flames, and Max gets pummeled by the double jugs. Oh, Max, 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 Max. I'm so sorry, mate. You know what? I think Max is on his own, guys. The mission unfortunately fails, either because I abandoned him, or because he was involved in the most violent spit roll ever posted to the internet. His death mixed in with the explosion of my car has left me in a tricky situation. If only it wasn't so 
weighed down by grenade launchers. <laughs> I don't think I'd make it back to base in my current state. Luckily, I find a car nearby, but unfortunately, it's out of fuel. Luckily, I know there's a petrol station nearby. Although, as it's not appearing on the map, it's probably claimed by a player car. I then tried to take a cheeky shortcut over this fence, but my guy's like, nah, I'm alright, but I'd rather get stuck in this wall. Use the radio command to unstuck me from my current situation. Oh, great, yeah, you could have put me in a better place, I'll be honest with you. I then get charged by a feral and have to take him down with my shotgun. But the loud blast causes a nearby horde to start chasing me. It definitely could have gone better. I take refuge on a nearby caravan, and this brief resting moment gives me an opportunity to come up with a cunning plan. But like usual, the only plan I've got is hit and fucking hope. I just want to put enough distance between me and this horde so I can backtrack and quickly search one of these fuel pumps. That turns out to be harder than you'd imagine, especially when bloaters get involved. But as the sun sets, I see my gap and I take it. I gotta rest. You can rest when you're dead, mate, which might not be too long to be fair. I manage to grab a can of fuel and run like my life depends on it, which technically it definitely does. Although in hindsight, this would have been so much easier if I'd left all the grenade launchers in the boot of this car. With the car refueled, I head back to base extremely carefully, as I'm almost certain this car is one light gust of wind away from detonating. And unfortunately, you don't get to laugh at me losing yet another car as I make it back to base with no issues. I take over as Terry use our best character due to him being from Red Talon, but unfortunately we're still a thousand influence away from where we need to be. So after repairing our new ride, Terry takes off in the dark for one final adventure. The plan is to meet up with Isby, who we briefly met at the Mad Scientists previously. She needs a hand with something, and I need a fuck ton of influence, so it seems like we're a match made in heaven. Ooh, what's with all these double jug hordes? Jesus Christ. Oh. And who leaves cars just parked in fields? In the middle of the night of all places. I meet up with Isby, but she's gonna be in the worst base I've ever seen in my life. After defending the lady's honor, we head off to check out her old base, as she left something valuable behind. I can do this. I can do this. What do you mean? You're not even fucking doing anything, you silly soft. We get to her old base, but it's overrun with a ton of plague zombies. And this silly twat needs to be a gentleman and keep her alive. Can you slow down a bit? Slow down? Love, have you seen how many freaking zombies are in you? I managed to keep her alive, but you're never officially part of the team until I set you on fire. Oh, Izzy's on fire. She searches for her shit while I keep her alive. We'll be done in just a sec. Yep, yep, take your time, love, take your time, it's alright. And once she's found it, she asks me to take her back to where I picked her up from. Of all the places she wants to go, though, I've no idea why she wants to go to the unfinished gas station. It's the same place she was hiding out in. It's claimed by a player car, and there's no walls. Crazy bitch. I drop her off and completely abandon her as soon as I've seen that mission complete sign. While I'm over here and 60% of my way to permanent infection, I decide it would be a great idea to take out a couple of player cars. The first is dead easy, as I'd already softened it up in the previous episode. I even take out the feral and the most badass way possible. Yeah, don't think so, bitch. The next heart was a fair bit harder, seeing as I had a horde chasing me down. But after smacking it about a bit, and after fighting yet another pack of ferals, like, look at this shit, I'm not even messing about with a spiky car. I just slap them up with ease, and all I need is an incredibly overpowered red talon guy mixed with a snap aim ability. I genuinely might be the best person to ever play this game. Don't forget to like and subscribe, and tell me you're better than me in the comment section. But like a certain purple Marvel villain, I am inevitable. And after that, I decided to go home and enjoy an incredibly successful day. No, of course I bloody don't, because a random stranger has asked me to help her get vengeance on another enclave. God damn it, it's like these people know I'll do anything to see blood. That and I'm also incredibly desperate for as much influence as humanly possible. So me and my new friend Christine of the Scattered Survivors head to the other side of the map deep into plague territory to claim vengeance. And we all know from the previous episode the hostile survivors in Nightmare Zone had no laughing matter. After slaying some blood plague, I move in. And when I say I move in, I kick in the blood bloody door, and back up ready to lob a frag grenade. But unsurprisingly, they don't fancy being blown up today, so decide to charge at me. But that doesn't go too well for them, as they're carrying guard and hold, and I'm equipped with military-grade weaponry. The last hostile tries to escape, but with a jug up his ass and me in front of him with an automatic rifle, he stands literally no chance. But I have a feeling that Juggernaut's gonna be a massive pain in my ass. Follow up with Christine. No, Christine, you need to get in the fucking car. She manages to limp her way into the car, but there's a plague zombie on the bonnet. But everyone knows that Toyota's greatest weakness is some light tapping on the hood. Okay, yep, yeah, this is not good, Christine. But I do have a repair kit. I'm trying to get out the car, though. She abandoned me as soon as the car set on fire. And let's be honest, the smartest play I can do here is just to abandon her. But all I gotta do is follow up with her and I'll complete the mission. And that should leave me with enough influence to claim a new base. But it turns out, Christine. 
Christine majorly suffers from main character syndrome. No, stop shooting the pissing thing. Stop it, Christine. Christine's desperate need for attention forces me to do what I don't want to. I must take down this juggernaut. I must complete Christine's mission. And I must move to the best base in this game. Christine, I'm so close to getting... All right, Christine, I'm now infected, love. Two videos on row. Uh, Teddy's been infected. I've got less than 10 minutes to get to safety and get some player cure. Fucking speak to me now. Quickly. I get that glorious mission complete alert and a hundred influence for my troubles. Now I just need to repair my car and I'll be able to safely drive back to base to collect the play cure. But I don't know if it's glitched or just taken way too much damage, but it won't allow me to repair it. I managed to climb to safety, but I've only got seven and a half minutes to save Terry's life. I need a vehicle. I'm gonna have to I'm just gonna have to get a vehicle. My last play is to call a vehicle, but that costs me a thousand influence. But it'll be worth it if I can only keep my red talon character alive. I'll have to move base in the next episode. At the moment, my main concern is just getting Teddy back alive. I'm not even afraid to risk the blunt force trauma. All right, well, I haven't got time to go around. We're taking the shortcut. As I drive head first off a collapsed bridge. And I don't even take a smidge of damage. Do I get style points for landing? Because that was pretty cool. Let this be a lesson and always wear your bloody seatbelt. But this is unfortunately where I have to give you some bad news. No! But at least he's had a fantastic ride. From the point I picked him up from that abandoned house, the barrel rolling him in the back of my pickup. Together, we destroyed many player carts and set many friends on fire. We took down countless hostiles and, uh, Several friendly people. Taken before he had reached his final stage. Can I get an R.I.P. Terry in the comment section? Is what I should be saying. But Terence the Red Talon guy is built different. He jumps out of his car with less than three minutes remaining. He climbs to safety on top of a shipping container. And he waits for that cloud to dissipate before running back into the vehicle. This is desperate times. Desperate measures. I don't even know if we're going to be able to make it. Oh, I'm going to make it, even if it's the last thing I bloody well do. I avoid the horde of double jug. The feral packs are too scared to spawn. And I kick in that gate with just over a minute remaining. Okay, people. Time to fight. Oh no, fuck off. No, I forgot about that. I throw Terence into the infirmary and use a less exciting character to finish the siege. I'm then able to craft a cure from leftover zombie remains, cram it all into a hypodermic needle I found outside. I then stick Terry at the neck with it. Well, this has been another fail. 